Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Iron Ship or Ship for short. I appreciate you being here today. Goal of this video is to dive through the fourth set of abyssal dungeons, and that is the Gate of Paradise, the eight man abysses. These are a lot of fun, they're pretty complicated, and they can be a little long because there's three bosses in some of them, and there's three abysses total. These specifically are the Sea of Indolence, Tranquil Carcosa, and Alaric Sanctuary. Like I said, a little complicated on some of these. This video is going to be a pain in the ass to create, but uh, let's keep this short and sweet and dive right in. All right, so let's dive into the first boss in the Sea of Indolence, which is the first abyss in the Gate of Paradise. So you're going to fight a four-headed dragon fish. This fight really isn't hard. You're all going to be in a diving suit or like a wetsuit with different abilities, kind of like a mech ability. Uh, and you either get a gauntlet or a ranged weapon. All you have to do for this fight is just dominate the boss at around half health. A shark buddy will spawn of his. Make sure your team focuses that shark because once you kill him, you'll get a damage buff. And then you can focus the boss and finish him off too. He's down. He's almost dead. Let's go, boys. Hold on. Down to that shit. Let's go, boys. Good work. The second fight in the final boss in the Sea of Indolence is a large sea monster. Before we dive into this fight, we need to take a second to discuss the breathing mechanic. From here on, through the vast majority of the rest of the abysses in this category, you'll have to worry about a breath circle above your head. This will slowly deplete, and the only way to gain this back is through bubble plants or bubble rock spots to stand on or grab that will ultimately refill that meter. Yellow moves from bosses will also greatly deplete oh, that meter. Okay, so now let's dive into the boss. The main mechanic of this boss is that he has a couple moves that petrify you, and the only way out is to wait a fair amount of time or have your teammates attack you until you're free. The boss will also have a personal white mechanic where he'll choose one person to spawn a safe zone on. If you don't get on top of that safe zone before he uses his move, you will die. The best way to handle this fight is for you and your team to group behind the boss and stay near each other to prepare for that wipe event. As you fight him, you'll get a feel for when this move is coming, and you'll have a bit of time after to go get breath if needed. Otherwise, I would just grab the breath periodically and just prepare for that move while you consistently damage him. Let's go! Woo! The first boss in the second abyss, Tranquil Carcosa, is a big pirate. He looks like Gangplank from League. He has a bunch of AoEs that do some serious damage, but you'll learn how they work as you fight him. The main AoE I want to discuss is this large color asphyxiated AoE. If the boss is holding his pistol in the air, you should go to the red tiles. If he's holding his anchor in the air, go to the blue tiles, and that'll help you avoid a stun. You'll know what I'm talking about, and I'll show it on the screen here. Outside of the, these AoEs, there are two main mechanics I want to talk about that are team wipes. The first one is the magician, and the second one is his stagger check. The magicians, he will summon two magicians top and bottom or right and left, and you will have to break a shield that they have on top of them with stagger damage before killing them as fast as possible. You may want to diversify your team to have four on one, four on the other, and make sure that's called out before you go into the fight. Uh, like I said, once you break their shields with stagger damage, you can go ahead and kill them, but you're going to have to do it quick because it is followed immediately by his stagger check wipe. Immediately following these magicians, he will start the stagger check. And if you don't do enough stagger damage to clear the bar below his name or below his body, then your whole team will wipe. If you're having trouble with this mechanic, have your team bring whirlwind grenades and save them for that moment and make sure it helps clear that bar fast. Blast, 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 and it's over. Blast, and it's over. He's done, he's done, he's done. Let's go. The second boss is simple, and she just has no wipe mechanics. The two main things to note for her are as follows. She will occasionally grab a player and punch him or her consistently. To set them free, you'll need to attack the boss with stagger. This move does not wipe them, but it'll do serious damage. Outside of that, she summons puffer fish that head toward her. If they reach her, she'll do a large AoE attack. Try to stop them and kill them beforehand. I mean, it, it, like I said, she still won't wipe you with that move, but it'll do a lot of damage. She's pretty easy. Just go ahead and kill her. The final boss is a large dragon turtle monster. He has one mechanic, but it's unusual, so I'm going to discuss it now. At 16 health bars and at 8 health bars, he will summon some balls to rush at him. They will be positioned at 8 fixed locations around the boss. Discuss this, these positionings prior to going in with all 8 players to make sure you have an understanding of your starting point. You will need to stop the balls from reaching the boss by face checking them. The tricky part is you will need to rotate clockwise after each collection because if you get hit by the same orb twice in a row, you will be stunned. You will need to collect the ball and then move one spot rotation clockwise around him to get the next one. The only difference on this is for the 16th health bar mechanic, you're going to rotate after each collection. But at the 8th bar mechanic, you will need to sit in place on the third collection before rotating to the next position again. Stay on three. Stay on three. Stay, stay, stay. 
One more. Luke. For the 8th health bar, I would also suggest being close to the boss as he creates a magnetic field orb around him that will damage you as you cross the line. So staying close to him will ensure that you have more time to collect the orbs as you don't have to move as much of a distance. And it'll make it a little easier for you. Two, rotate. Stay on three. Stay on three. Stay, stay, stay. One more. Luke. Let's kill his bitch ass. Oh, oh, oh. And there we go. Nice. nice. The first boss in Alaric Sanctuary is a weird one as you fight two bosses at the same time and the party starts separated. This boss isn't really hard, but it has a white mechanics, so listen to what I have to say. One party starts a fight against the shark and the other one starts the fight against the siren. The shark team will have a standard battle against a shark who's very mobile and hits pretty hard while the other team is fighting the siren who has to handle a mechanic. When they get her to 15 health bars, she will teleport to the shark team's map and prepare a team wipe. When she does so, she will leave one golden orb and a bunch of black orbs on that old map. The team that's on that empty map needs to destroy the golden orb and get the golden aura around the person who got the killing blow on it. You should then take the teleporter at the bottom of the map as a team, go to the other team's map, and stand still so that that team can get in the aura. When this happens, the siren will stay in the middle of the map repairing the wipe, but the shark will come to attack you. When you're in that aura, you take no damage, so go off on the shark. Once the wipe misses you all, you can kill the siren. She puts a poison move out at 10 health bars that goes on one person. It can be cleansed by walking in poison spots, uh, but it's not a huge deal. Kill her first and then go after the shark and kill him. The white mechanic will happen one more time when you're on the shark, when you're just with the shark map, and you're going to stay together from that point on. So ensure you get the golden orb and sit in it and do damage to him like you did last time. Okay, yep, we're saying it. Stay still, stay still, stay still, stay still, stay still, stay still. Nice heals, nice heals, whoever's healing. Thank you, Nice. I'm moving. Nice job, guys. One down. The second boss is a large water elemental that has a few things you need to worry about. The main mechanic of the fight is you need to ensure you have the boss break all four pillars around the map. After about four health bars, the boss will put a large target over somebody's head. The other players will have a large red circle around them. The player with the crosshair should run in front of one of those pillars and prepare to dodge or use a movement skill as the boss tries to hit you. The players with the red circle need to be far away from that person or that pillar because that a that circle will create an AOE knockup and deal damage to anyone around you. You don't want that touching the person being targeted, obviously, because it could mess up their location. Oh my God. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. No, I got launched away! The person being targeted should try to dodge the attack if possible, but if not, at least have the boss hit you and one of the pillars. He will be stunned for a few seconds after he destroys this, so make sure your team does heavy damage to him. Outside of this, the boss will grab a player for a stagger check, and he Hulk smashes them around the map. Use stagger moves and grenades to knock him out of that mode. And his final mechanic is that about at 10 health bars, he will start applying a stacking debuff every time he hits you. After 5, it will freeze nearby's play nearby players, so please be safe. And that's how you f***ing do it. Good thing we didn't f***ing surrender. Good catch, good boys. The final boss of the Third Abyss is tough with a capital T. There are a few major mechanics to talk about, so we'll work through them all. The first mechanic I want to talk about, it's kind of a light one, is the same thing from the last go-around on the last boss. Every five attacks or so, you're going to get frozen. It's a debuff that keeps stacking on top of you. Now let's get into the, some of the serious mechanics. Every 90 seconds, the boss will teleport to the middle of the map and create safe zones around him. These will be positioned at 9, 10.5, 12, 1.5, 3, and two locations at 6 o'clock on a clock face. There will also be a rotating location around the boss that someone's going to need to ensure is handled. Your team will put one person in each of those circles to be safe from his team wipe. Focus on getting to the spots and not damaging him during this time because he takes reduced damage. The next major mechanic is his stagger check slash team wipe. You will need to stagger check the boss in the middle of the map while killing incoming orbs that are coming in 360 around him. You will need to stagger check the boss and ensure these orbs do not touch the circle around him to avoid a total loss. 
I would use whirlwind grenades to help you keep the stagger check going. And that way you can focus on the circles on the outside. If the circles on the outsides are large and they're tough to break, you will need to hit them with a stagger move first. Sleep grenades can also help on the large circles. Once you've done this successfully and managed to handle the circles and the stagger check, he will jump backwards and be stunned for a short while. Lastly, once the boss hits his final phase, he will begin planting a freezing orb around the map. These orbs will have a massive effect on the screen, and in order to stop everyone from freezing, someone will need to walk into the orb and freeze themselves. If you have a dodge roll or a solid movement ability, you can use that to go through the orb so that you don't freeze while you grab it. Have eyes out for this always. This fight may take some practice, but this will become like clockwork with time. But Peck, be careful. There was one under the gooch. If you need to go middle on the next one, be careful. I got it again. I got it again. That's a good recurring mechanic. Yes! Well, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Guys, this one was a pain to create, but thank you for the love on these videos as of late. Uh, subscribing here, following any of my socials, my Twitch, all that stuff means the world to me and it helps me out greatly. I would appreciate it. Thank you very much for being here, and I love you guys.